Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we are uh, bringing another sour beer review to you today. Um, we've got uh, two uh, different brewers and they're both sour but different styles. Um, one's a classic style, one's just kind of a generic sour ale. Um, so starting today with actually a bit of an interesting uh, twist considering the brewer. Uh, we've got Stone Brewing Company, which uh, most people know is a West Coast Ferry Hop Ford uh, style brewer, but they of course brew beers of all different styles. Um, today is uh, for sure the first sour I've ever had by Stone. Uh, this one is called Notorious P.O.G. Um, it is a Berliner Weisse and is brewed with passion fruit, orange, and guava, hence the P.O.G. Um, this one clocks in at 4.7% ABV and Stone Brewing is based out of Escondido, California. Though they do actually now have an East Coast uh, brewing operation set up in Richmond, Virginia. As I'm in Tampa, Florida, I assume mine was probably brewed in Richmond as it's closer to me. Uh, beer number two is from Prairie Artisan Ales. This is No Way Froze, which is a sour ale that's been brewed with lime zest, strawberry, and pineapple puree, as well as juniper. Um, this one clocks in at 4.9% ABV, and Prairie Artisan Ales is based out of Krebs, Oklahoma. So today we've got uh, two different sours, two different styles. One's a Berliner Weisse, so it shouldn't have a ridiculously pungently sour bin. And then Prairie Artisan, which I actually expect to be uh, quite a bit more intense in terms of sour, um, as they tend to make their beers all kind of extreme, no matter what style they're brewing. Uh, but nonetheless, very much looking forward to jumping into both of these. So we're going to get things kicking off with the Stone, Notorious POG, the Berliner Weisse with Passion Fruit, Orange, and Guava, clocking in at 4.7% ABV. Okay, starting right off with the Stone Brewing Company's Notorious POG, uh, Berliner Weisse brewed with Passion Fruit, Orange, and Guava, clocking in at 4.7% ABV again. Stone is based in, uh, headquartered in Escondido, California, though um, they do now have a Richmond, Virginia-based uh, facility for brewing, uh, which I'm certain is um, out to help them get more beer to the masses and uh, probably where mine, being East Coast-based, is brewed. Uh, nonetheless, um, check out their label art. It is classic stone. It's got the stone gargoyle there on the label. Um, very uh, bright color scheme as well. It's a dark purple with a bright kind of pink text. It's got some flowers on the sides. It looks nice. Nice looking can, but nonetheless, that's about all there is to talk about. So let's get this cracked. I'm going to try to be gentle so my canned beers don't get away from me and try to spill all over my desk. That was great. All right. Pour it right into the glass. This one's already surprising me out of the gate, and it looks like it is trying to form a massive, massive head here which is very, very rare for a sour beer. Yeah, I can't say I've ever actually had a sour beer form a head quite that intense. And normally when they do, they will get right out of the way because they tend to be very, very, very effervescent. This is no different though. This uh, head seems to be quite huge and have quite a lot of sting power, though it's actually um, collapsing quite quickly from the top. The, it's so effervescent, the bubbles are just popping all over the place. There's a ton of carbonation coming up from underneath. So I'm going to slowly try to... Uh, this would be the part where I would normally be aggressive down the middle, but since it's forming a head and we don't really want that on a sour, um, I'm going to be more gentle. But while that's settling, uh, let's take a peek at this. Visually, it's a very beautiful beer. Um, I would say overall, it's uh, a bit darker than your average Berliner Weisse, and this one actually does look um, unfiltered. It looks cloudy, it looks hazy, uh, cannot see through it, it is not clear, uh, and it is a bit darker, but it's a very nice looking beer. It does visually look quite appealing. Um, that head is still working its way to collapsing, so I'm just going to help it out here and uh, give a little swirl with my finger as well. With as quickly as the carbonation is coming up, breaking that down, it shouldn't take long for that to settle out of the way. Yeah, that's what the doctor ordered. So I'm going to gently, very, very gently, finish topping this off and getting the last of this beer into the glass. All right. 
that looks pretty good. I'm gonna give one final little swirl here, swirl here on the top to try to get the last remnants of this head out of the way. Don't really want that on a sour. A little bit of one and a little cling's okay, but in a sour beer, don't really wanna be diving through a bunch of sour beer foam. Okay, yep, looks great. Let's give it a sniff. Yeah, that's actually got a very, very nice aroma. Um, I can tell you, I don't smell particularly strongly the classic Berliner Weisse aroma, where you'll kind of get um, a little bit of a sour hint and then some kind of underlying uh, malt bill tones, which tend to be kind of baked good, crackery, toast, crust, crumbs, biscuit, kind of that. I'm much, much more getting the fruit that's coming through quite strongly. Um, the passion fruit and the guava and the orange are really coming through in equal parts. Um, so it definitely does smell like it was brewed with all three after its namesake. The head's basically gotten out of the way, so let's jump in, give it a sip. <clears throat> okay, that's nice. It's nice beer. Very light, very refreshing, very crisp. Um, very, very fruit forward. I can tell you it's got roughly about the same sour intensity that your average Berliner Weisse does, maybe even a little milder than the average, but the fruit comes through in abundance. It is exceptionally fruit forward. It's not sweet. It's a sour beer, slightly sour beer style. So there's enough sweetness, but you can taste that fruit for sure. And all of them equally, equally strongly. It does taste very well balanced in terms of the additives they put in there. Now, the one thing that I can tell you I am really having a hard time detecting is the classic Berliner Weisse malt bill. The fruit additive is so intense that it's really killing the subtlety of the Berliner Weisse malt bill, which I'm a big fan of. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, but from a balance perspective, um, perhaps not the greatest. Um, I'm gonna jump in again for body and mouthfeel, see if I can pick anything up in this finish here. The body is quite light. It's a barely inner vice, so that's to be expected. Doesn't have a lot of breadth. The mouthfeel, in the mouth first, before you give it agitation, feels just like a Berliner Weisse normally would. But this one, if you give it even the slightest hint of agitation, gets insanely creamy. I mean, insanely creamy. We're talking putting cream ales and nitro tap stouts to shame. It, it gets that ridiculously thick and creamy, milkshake-like. It is thick, properly, properly thick. Um, each finish of the sip, it's not ridiculously long, but it's certainly longer than your average Berliner Weisse. And really, again, I stay by. I got it on the first sip. The subtlety of the Berliner Weisse malt bill is really kind of drowned out and lost in this, which for me personally is a shame. I like it. It's nice. It's a good beer. It tastes nice. I'm enjoying the flavor of it, but I'm missing the underlying character quality that is at the heart of the Berliner Weisse for me. And that's the interesting character traits of the Berliner Weisse malt bill. Um, I'm not getting any real sense of that toast, kind of baked good, crackery, biscuity, crusty nature at all. It's just fruit. It's full on fruit. Um, and it does taste good, but it's missing the Berliner Weisse character traits for me. And indeed, I'm not even getting the classic slight dryness to the finish. It's just so fruit forward. I, I don't know. It's just adding a lot more layers to the beer that and it's a delicate beer style with which to start so you start adding other stuff in there you can easily drown it out and i think that's what happened here um don't get me wrong i enjoy the beer i think it tastes very very good but if you're expecting a classic berliner vice a drinking experience you might be a little disappointed in this one um, because you're not going to get all the character traits that come through in this beer uh, for better or for worse. That's just what I'm experiencing. I'm going to jump in uh, one more time for final thoughts. Nice little tang. Nice little sour up front. Then just boatload of fruit. 
you can taste them all independently. It's very nice. It's very bright. It's very fruity. It adds a little kind of fruit underlying tang that lets the zest and the tartness of the sour kind of intensify a bit as it goes a little longer. It's not as intense up front, but then it kind of maintains its intensity for longer um, because of the way that at least mentally and sensorily it uh, pairs with the fruit. And the sips, it's got, it's got a longer than average finish, but it doesn't have the cl classic character traits. There's no dryness. I'm not getting any of the classic barley or vice malt traits. Yeah, it's it's really all about the fruit that are in this one. So it's kind of an interesting barley or vice. Um, some people may really really enjoy this. Uh, some people may be disappointed if they're purist and like kind of the purity of the style and like all those classic elements to come through. Um, there are some that are missing in this, but nonetheless, it's a nice beer. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna sip on this, count my scores. When we come back, we are gonna to get to our second beer that is Prairie Artisan Ales No Way Frosé, the sour ale brewed with lime zest, strawberry, and a pineapple puree and juniper. That one clocks in at 4.9% ABV. Okay, now moving on to beer number two of today's sour beer review. We have got Prairie Artisan Ales No Way Frosé. Uh, this is a sour ale brewed with lime zest, strawberry, and pineapple puree, and juniper. 4.9% ABV, Prairie Artisan Ales is based out of Krebs, Oklahoma. Um, in terms of label art, they always have some relatively interesting art. Um, this one is, is just kind of a chaotic scene. It's got dogs all over the place with people doing various things. It's very brightly colored. Uh, they tend to have very interesting label art. Um, this is no exception. Nonetheless, let's uh, get this cracked. I'm gonna be gentle here. Okay, I'm two for two today, great. All right, we're gonna get this poured right in the glass. Okay. This one, very, very effervescent, as was the last. Um, it's forming a little bit of a head, but nothing anywhere near what that stone did and it's very very carbonated and active so as per usual with most sours I expect that that head is going to get right out of the way here very very quickly. Um, visually this looks uh, remarkably similar to the prior though it's got a bit more clarity. Um, I can say that I can see some suspended particulates floating in there, so it's possible they don't filter this beer. Um, with the puree in there that has very fine particulates, it'd be rather tricky to get that out. But looks great. Head's almost completely gone. Let's give it a sniff. Okay, yeah. This is another one that has quite a pronounced aroma for a sour. Um, I can tell you the sour itself on this beer smells far more pungent than it did on the Stone uh, Notorious POG. This smells far more sour. Um, you can smell the fruit that's in here. It smells quite nice, but the sour is still the dominant on this one. So it's quite a bit different in terms of aroma. Um, it's settled. Let's jump right in and see what we think. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, that's quite a bit more sour. Quite a bit more sour. Okay, so the sour is the dominant kind of function of this beer. The lime zest absolutely does come through on the front, immediately behind the sour. And then you do have a nice and very clear and even mix of strawberry and pineapple that comes through from the puree. The juniper, I'm not really picking up. I've had that in many beers. I know what it tastes like. I can't really pick it up in this beer. Um, it's, it's quite nice. It's uh, far more astringently sour and frankly this beer has a finish to it that is a lot more in the line with what I expected from the Berliner Weiss that we tried first. Um, it does have that kind of biscuity kind of baked good toast cracker crust biscuit kind of finish to it. Um, that's got a little bit of a dryness, just a hint of dryness, not overtly dry, but just a hint. Um, I'm gonna jump back in for body and mouth feel. The 
The body on this one, I would say is medium, medium light, somewhere on the fence between the two. At 4.9, it's almost a 5%, so that's, you know, maybe a little heavier than I anticipated, but there it is. Very effervescent in the mouth. I'll start to agitate it around the palate, it gets ridiculously creamy, just as the prior did. Um, and really, it's sour, tart, then you get that nice lime that comes through, and then it's the strawberry and the pineapple that come through. And then it has that very kind of baked good kind of finish out to it with just hints of the fruit and the zest that still are coming through and the sour and the tart gets completely out of the way. Finish on this is what I expected from the Berliner Weisse. Again, it's not a super long finish. I'd say it's kind of high end of average, really where it's sitting, but it's very nice. It's a very nice beer, um, far more intensely sour, Though not top end spectrum of sour, don't get me wrong. Just comparatively, it's significantly more sour than the stone offering was. But the stone was also a Berliner Weiss, so they're not supposed to be ridiculously sour. Um, but this is quite nice. It's a very enjoyable beer. It's very refreshing. Jump in one more sip for final thoughts. It's nice. It's nice. It's very nice. I can tell you, really, comparatively, I do think this is a far better balanced beer because you get the big punch of sour, the big bunch of tart, all of the fruit that they added in comes in, but nothing overshadows, and then you get that full, beautiful malt bill to finish it out. So you get little bits of everything and they all kind of play their part and they're all kind of in equal portions. It's a very nice beer, it's very well balanced. I enjoyed this one. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores, and when we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, so now that we've gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're going to get them ranked, starting with the Stone Brewing Company's Notorious POG. This is a Berliner Weisse brewed with passion fruit, orange, and guava. Clocks in at 4.7% ABV. Um, again, Stone is based out of Escondido, California, though they do now have a Richmond, Virginia-based brewing operation to serve the East Coast. Um, so on this one, starting with the aroma. The aroma was very, very nice. It was quite pronounced. Um, you could really smell all of the fruit that they put in this beer, and they all came through uh, quite equally. You could distinctly detect passion fruit, orange, and guava in the aroma. Um, wasn't that huge on the malt bill kind of detection in terms of the aroma. A um, little sour tart, but dominant fruit. It was uh, quite pronounced. It gets a 9 out of 10. Taste on this one. It was a very nice beer. I enjoyed it. Uh, the flavor was very nice. It was very fruit dominant, very fruit forward. Uh, really, for me, uh, while I did enjoy it, I would have liked a slightly more present sour and tart kick, even though Berliner Weisses aren't pungently. The fruit kind of overshadowed that element in this beer for me. And it also overshadowed, overshadowed the classic Berliner Weisse malt flavor characteristics and certainly the traits on the end. And uh, for me, that's part of the experience with the Berliner Weisse. Um, I did dock points for those two lacking uh, sections. Uh, gets a total of seven for the taste. Body. Uh, the body was textbook for a Berliner Weisse. Uh, I mean, it's, it's exactly what I expected. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, mouthfeel, same thing. Um, just another, it, it nailed it. This was the exact right Berliner Weisse mouthfeel. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, the finish on this one. Finish was quite long. It was quite long and it really kept going and going and going, certainly much longer than the average Berliner Weisse. That said, it was missing the classic dryness to the Berliner Weisse finish. Um, I did dock one point for that, so it gets a total of nine. Head and retention. Um, this beer actually formed a ridiculously huge head. It did eventually get out of the way, um, but that's not what you want in this beer style, really on <sighs> sours. I mean, it's just, they're very, very effervescent. A uh, mouthful of sour beer foam is just inappropriate and it, it really shouldn't happen. Um, I did dock points here. I gave it the low end of average, I gave it a four. Uh, Appearance-wise, this was a lovely beer, absolutely a lovely beer. Beautiful color, um, had a little occlusion to it, much like uh, most Berliner Weisses do. Um, for me, I thought it was close, just a little darker. Obviously, they added in passion fruit, orange guava. That's gonna add some coloring effect, which is probably why it was a bit darker than standard, but I only docked one point, I gave it a nine. Balance. 
Uh, balance was one of the areas I had the biggest uh, problem with this beer. While I did enjoy it subjectively, um, for the most part, objectively, uh, it was unbalanced. Uh, the fruit was far too intense for this beer. It completely killed the Berliner Weisse uh, characteristic traits uh, almost in their entirety. Um, really, it was a story of a fruited beer that was slightly sour. I mean, it could have been any generic style, but you know, the, the classic traits of the Berliner Weisse have those baked good um, kind of malt flavors that come through. You get bread, you get crumbs, you get toast, you get crackers, biscuits, and that distinct dry finish at the end, and this just didn't have it for me. Um, it was nice, but unbalanced. I gave it average, I gave it a five. Uh, feeling in the intangible, uh, I enjoyed the beer, um, but honestly for me, it was kind of a letdown. Did not get the classic Berliner Weisse malt traits. Um, that's uh, part of what really seals the deal on this style for me. There's many different myriad, um, you know, sour beer styles out there. Berliner Weisses are kind of an odd one. They're an out odd outlier that share traits with a lot of different beers, but they're distinctly their own animal. And this one just got overpowered by the fruit. It gets another average score from me, it gets a five. Finally, as an example of the style, um, it's a good beer. I enjoyed it. As a Berliner Weisse goes, it's an enjoyable Berliner Weisse. But again, I gotta come back to the big main points on this one. It wasn't balanced. The fruit far overpowered the malt, and the malt is part of the main characters and story of the Berliner Weisse style. It's kind of what makes it what it is. If that gets drowned out by additives, and I appreciate additives in beers. I, I love beers that have new ingredients, you know, to see what new beers they can come up with. But this one was just a bit over the top. It gets average again, it gets a five. Um, that brings the total score on Stone Brewing's Notorious POG to a 73 out of 100. So it is an above average rating. Um, take, uh, take it with a grain of salt. You know, you may have differing opinions, but I got to report what I experienced. Um, moving on to beer number two, Pro Artisan Ales Noe Frosé. This was a sour ale brewed with lime zest, strawberry and pineapple puree and juniper. This one clocked in at 4.9% ABV and Prairie Artisan Ales is based in Krebs, Oklahoma. Uh, starting with uh, the aroma on this one, the aroma was nice. Um, you got that classic, you could smell the, the sour up front, uh, quite pronounced. You knew it was gonna have a good sour kick and tartness. Um, could really pick up the, the lime that came through. You could certainly pick up the strawberry and the pineapple. Juniper I didn't really get, but it was nice. It was certainly well above average. It gets an eight out of 10. Uh, taste, I enjoyed this one. Um, I did actually expect it to be a bit more uh, sour and tart pungent. It was certainly much more so than the stone, but uh, it was dialed back for a Prairie Artisan Sour. Um, you know, and that's, they don't have to make everything the most intense beer in the world. It was enjoyable. Uh, really for me, the taste though, I would have liked perhaps a little bit more of the strawberry and pineapple puree to come through. The lime was quite dominant and the juniper I would have just loved to detect somewhere in there. Um, it's a very nice flavor in beer and I couldn't get it in the aroma or in the flavor. Um, I did dock two points, it gets an eight out of 10. Uh, for the body, as with the stone, it was exactly what I expected, it gets a 10 out of 10. Mouthfeel, same thing, exactly what I expected, 10 out of 10. Uh, finish on this one. Finish on this one was equally as long as on the stone uh, Notorious POG. Had a nice long finish and you could really pick out all the flavors in it. Again, for me, um, it was just missing that juniper and I would have liked to at least detect it somewhere in the finish with each sip. Even if it's just at the tail end and I just missed it, I did dock one point, it gets a nine. Uh, head and retention, this one did slightly form a head and it was immediately gone as anticipated for us hour. I only docked one point, it gets a nine out of 10. Uh, appearance wise, beautiful beer. This is kind of an adjunct, kind of whatever, just a sour ale. Um, it, it looked great. I mean, it, it really, really did. Really what I expected. It gets a 10 out of 10. Uh, balance on this. Balance on this was far superior to the stone in my humble opinion. You could really pick out everything that they put into this beer and plenty of sour and plenty of tart. It was only missing the juniper, which I couldn't detect. I wanted it in the aroma and the flavor somewhere. I did dock one point, it gets a nine. Feeling in the intangible. This was a very enjoyable beer. Um, absolutely an enjoyable beer. I did expect a bit more intensity. And again, I'm gonna keep coming back to that juniper. I, you know, I'm sorry. Multiple things that, 
if it's not balanced right in a beer, it's gonna affect multiple categories. It's just the way that it goes. Um, I docked one point subjectively, I gave it a nine. Finally, as an example of the style, I thought this was just another classic great sour done by Prairie Artisan. Really, I haven't had any bad beers that they've done. I certainly have my favorites and my preferences, uh, but this was a very well done beer. Um, not quite as intense as some of their other sours I've had, but it was still very tasty. Could really pick everything out, um, again, with the exception of the juniper. So yet again, I did dock one point, it gets a nine. That brings the total score on Prairie Artisan Ales, No Way for Jose, to a 91 out of 100. So all totaled, we're looking at a pretty big point spread here. Um, 18 points is pretty significant. Um, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. Everybody has their own personal preferences. Um, I'm just telling you what I experienced and how the points came out. I did enjoy both beers. I would certainly drink both again. And uh, you know, it's if you're in a lighter, you know, not quite a sour, a little more fruity, this might be one for you. If you like a little more sour intensity um, that still has some interesting flavors in it, this might be one to go for. But both very good beers. I would uh, certainly recommend both of them to anybody that's a fan of the styles. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to YouTube, you can just click the notification bell icon. It is right next to the subscribe button. Till next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.